Well, good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, I, I'm kind of on a roll on teaching right now. And I, I know, believe me, I get it. There's so much going on in the world right now, it's not even funny. But oddly enough, I think that a lot of the teachings that I'm doing are also very newsworthy uh, in comparison to the things that are going on. I mean, if you just take some of these teachings and then liken it to the things that are happening, it'll make more sense. Even when I talk about prayer, how to pray, the secret of prayer, uh, entering into your closet, what it really means, things like that. Uh, you know, <laughs> these are things that we're going to need to know because of the things that are coming upon this earth, right? Absolutely. And today we're going to be talking about thorns and thistles oddly enough and you know you're looking at a flower here uh, I didn't take this photo here another guy took this one here very common in Israel uh, I, I have I took a picture of one one time and I kind of I had the one picture of that blue flower in the foreground and, and several in the background blurred so it made a really beautiful like canvas like look to it I wish I knew where mine was right off I'd put it up instead but I wanted to use this particular image because what it does is it shows the beauty of the flower, but yet the thorns that are all around it. And believe me, that rascal will poke the dickens out of you uh, if you get into it. And But we're not just looking at flowers. We're not just looking at thorns. Uh, but I wanted to show something to you. And it's going to, I think you're going to really look at this passage a lot different than you ever have before. Not sure if I want to use the King James Version, Matthew, for this. Um, yeah, the, we'll, use, we'll use this right here. The KJV, King James Version here. You shall know them by their fruits. Hmm. Just, just that in itself, right? You shall know what? Them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes? of thorns or of figs of thistles <laughs> you know this is fascinating if you really think about it and I really should have done some cross-referencing into the Dead Sea Scrolls as well uh, on this issue but I did not I did not and I have a feeling as soon as I'm done with doing this video I'm probably gonna go in there and look at that and then wished I would have um, but I want, I want that to soak in for a moment. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So some of the most pleasant fruits that there are are not gathered. In other words, a fig tree does not have thorns on it or thistles. Neither does the grapevine. Okay, now I'm going to take and, and really go deep with this with you because we're going to really look now at Matthew chapter 7 in a completely different light because notice what he's saying. You shall know them. See, what did he say? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And he says, you shall know them. You're going to know who? Those false prophets. Because why? They are actually from thorns and thistles is what he's implying. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? No, you don't. You don't. So you know the tree by the fruit it bears. And he, it's, it's fascinating to me that he talks about thorns and thistles. And you're probably like, Steve, when are you going to get off that kick? We got, okay, the thorns and thistles. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 for a moment. Now, you might think of G Genesis 3 altogether differently after this, right? You really might really start thinking about it differently. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy travail. Now, that doesn't actually say that in the Hebrew language. Arabah, Arabe is what it says. 
And it literally means the great one lying in wait. Arabe. This word right there that I just highlighted in blue. Arabe. Means to lying, lie in wait. It's like, it's, the, it's often used in the analogy in the Hebrew scriptures there as like a lion that is getting ready to pounce on his prey. Remember the serpent was what? He was said to be above all the beast of the field. The serpent was the one that was lying in wait. So he says here, unto the woman he says, the great one lying in wait, and it doesn't say, I will. There's, there is no I will in the Hebrew text there. No, not one place does it say, uh, Haye, Ani Haye, I will, or excuse me, well, that would be I was, sorry. Um, you know, uh, the point is, there is no I will in the text at all. It just simply says, the great one lying in wait, causes her pain and sorrow, and she would what? Taladai banim. She shall birth sons. Not children, sons. She's going to birth sons. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. The, the only great one that was there that was above all the cattle of the field was the serpent. So that great one that serpent was the one that was lying in wait. He's the one that causes her, not to future generations, not to other women. So no, it's not going to cause a bunch of other women to have pain and sorrow in their childbearing. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have pain when you birth children, but he says specifically pain and sorrow, and that happens to be in the Hebrew language, happens to be uh, almost like a, not a physical pain, but the sorrow of heart. And you'll bring forth sons. You'll birth sons is literally what he says to her. Verishach. And to your husband, to Shutecha, he literally says that you'll turn to him. You're going to turn to him. And he is going to mashal becha. He will rule. He will dominate you. Well, that's because there's a fall that took place. I don't want to focus a lot of time on this because that's not what we're here to look at today. We're not here to look at that. But I just want to kind of focus on that, though, because it's prophetic. Okay? Also, when he says up here in verse 15, I will put enmity, hatred, between you and the woman. Talking to the serpent, right? And between your seed, za, uven za, in the blue in verse 15, that is. Who shufrecha rosh. And he and, and not they, but and he will rosh. And he, the word he is right here, who he will bruise your head. Not they. Alright. We've been through this before. Alright, let's go back down to verse 17, though. That's where I want to get to. Verse 17 and then to verse 18. And to Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. And keep in mind, so far everything's been prophetic. So there could be a very prophetic statement to Adam as well. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil shall you eat of it all the days of your life. And I do believe that that has to do with a physical issue too. He, uh, he is going to have to toil the ground in order to bring forth the bread, in order to eat, etc. I get that. But when he said, cursed is the ground for your sake, you got to remember, where did Adam come from in the first place? From the dust of the earth. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall you eat bread till 
you return into the ground, for out of it were you taken, and for dust you are, and dust you shall return. Now, it's odd that God actually says to Adam, you're from that ground, you came from it, and you're going to go back to it. He also says that ground is going to be cursed. But then he makes that very unusual statement, thorns also and thistles. Now, it doesn't actually use the word also in there. But it does say, and thorns and thistles shall it bring forth. It's going to bring forth thorns and thistles. You know, it's interesting. The word thistles in Hebrew is very similar to the word used in Hebrew for generation. Dora, dora. Vedara, dara. Hmm. It's almost as if it is a generation of thorns, right? Now, I find that fascinating, and I, I never really thought about it before until I began to read what Jesus said over here. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Well, he's comparing it to trees. Good fruit comes off of a fig tree. There's no thorns on the fig tree. But then again, we also have, too, where Jesus speaks about, uh, I believe it's over here in Matthew. Um, I want to say it's chapter 13. Yeah, chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows good seed in his field. And it came to pass, the men were sleeping, and his enemy came and sowed tares over the wheat, literally upon it. That is Borega, and he went away, and it came to pass when the herb grew up to make fruit. He saw the tares, and the servants of the master of the field drew near to him and said to him, Master, do you not sow good seed? And thence when came these tares? And he said to them, My enemy did this. His servant said to him, We will uproot the tares. Now, by the way, the word tares here is a little bit different word than the word uh, kutz for, for, for tares in Hebrew. But when you look at the way it's described there, the description of the way the thorn and the, and the tear looks is exactly the same thing. It's like a horn, like a little sharp horn type of plant. So it is a weed. And what's interesting is that picture I shared with you, that's pretty much what a tear might look like when it comes up. All thorny. Very interesting. Now, I'm going to take now, we're going to, we're going to go back over here to, uh, we're going to go to this chart here too, because it's going to get interesting for you. I'm going to go over here to uh, Matthew chapter 7. We're going to use the Hebrew version of this for a moment, because it's going to be important to do that. Judge not lest you be judged with what judgment you judge. Be measure, measure, uh, <clears throat> with what measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the straw in the eye of the person? We know we know all this here. I want to kind of get past that part there, though. Let's get for a little further down. Talking about the 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 thorn in your eye, and you know you want to cast it out when you got one in your own eye, right? Okay, here's where we're going to get it. This is where it's going to get interesting. Let's start with verse six. And he said again to them, "Do not give holy flesh." to dogs, nor place your pearls before swine, lest they chew them before you and turn and rend you. I think I'm actually getting warm enough I can take this off. So, <laughs> it's cold. It's going to be minus two degrees here, by the way, tonight. So anyway, I walk outside and I had a, a bucket of water before I get to the chicken coop. It's already freezing over. All right. Ask from God, and it will be given you seeking. You will find knock, and it will be open to you. Now, here's what's interesting. Give not the holy flesh to dogs, 
Now, in Hebrew, it literally says holy flesh. Basa Kodesh. There it is, right there. Basa Kodesh. Don't give holy flesh to dogs. Let it soak for a moment. Tears, thorns, thistles, holy flesh to dogs. By the way, dogs are considered Gentiles. Ask from God, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Everyone who asks will receive. By the one who seeks, it will be found. And to the one who calls, it will be opened. Who is there among you whose sons ask him for a piece of bread and he gives him a stone? Or if he should ask for a fish, he gives him a snake. By the way, that reference right there, verse 10, or if he asks for a fish, he gives him a snake, is referencing back to the time of the children of Israel in the wilderness journey. When they asked, they were complaining that they didn't have the, you know, or, you know, what I should say, they were reminiscing about the fish that they had down in Egypt. And they were upset the fact that they were in a desert and they didn't have the, the fish and the melons, the zeeks and things like that. They were talking about that. And God sends in the fiery serpents. Actually, I think that's called winged serpents. And they bit them and killed them. Now, I want you to think deeply when you listen to this then. First, he says, don't give holy flesh to dogs. Then he gives you this interesting type here. If you... Or if, or if your son should ask for a fish, he gives him a snake. But if you being evil come to a place good gifts before yourselves, so much the more your father who is in heaven will give good will give his good spirit to those who seek him. I, I'm, I'm slowing down on this for a reason. Every word in this chapter is so rich. So let's back up. Don't give holy flesh to dogs. Nor place your pearls before swine, lest they chew them before you and turn to rend you. Let me kind of simplify this. God is trying to get you to recognize that you need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within you to make you a true child of the Son of God or a daughter of God. That's why he says, everyone who asks will receive. By the one who seeks, it will be found. To the one who calls, it will be opened. He's trying to give you also a little clue about this whole thing, about the good gifts. And your heavenly Father will not give you serpents when you're asking for fish. And then he lets you know, but if you being evil come to a place to good good gifts before yourselves, so much the more your Father which is in heaven would give, good, give his good spirit to those who seek him. You see, there's a major lack in the body of Christ, and that body is a body that is sickly because they do not have the very quickening seed of the Holy Spirit lying within them we're going to get deeper hold on verse 12 everything you wish that men should do to you do to them this is the torah the words of the prophets at that time jesus said to his disciples enter the narrow gate because the gate of destruction is wide and deep and many are going through it 
How narrow is the gate and grievous the way that leads straight to life and few are those who find it. And he said to them, Beware a false prophet who come to you in the wool, wool clothing like sheep, but inside are tearing wolves. Now we come back to the verse we started off with. By their deeds you will know them. Does man gather grapes from thorns or figs from briars? Every good tree, notice that, every good tree makes good fruit and every bad tree makes bad fruit. The good tree cannot make bad fruit, nor can the bad tree make good fruit. Now he's letting you know those trees that are, have briars and thorns are evil trees. You see, like for example, when the Pharisees, when they took and they plated that crown of thorns, and they put it on Jesus' head, and they mocked him and beat him over the head with a reed and said, Hail, King of the Jews, prophesy, tell us who hit you. They gave of the fruit that their tree had to offer. Thorns. Now when you look back at Genesis... And God says to Adam, Thorns and also thistles shall it bring forth to you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. What a prophetic, profound statement. Thorns also and thistles, it is going to come to you, Adam, the second Adam. But you shall eat the herb of the field. And what did Jesus do when his disciples were gathered in the upper room? And he took and he had the bread and he broke it and he said, This is my body. He had the bread of life. Why? Because he was a tree as well. And in type, he is an olive tree, which is the oil, which represents the Holy Spirit. But he said that that bread was his body. He was the first fruits of the harvest. No doubt the barley to make the bread with. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, Adam, the second time Adam. And you shall eat the herb of the field. But it will bring to you thorns, Pharisees, and thistles, Sadducees. Why? Because they are the type of tree that they are. The sweat of thy face shall you eat bread. And when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and the sweat dropped from his head as if it were great drops of blood. Till you returned to the ground for out of it were you taken. And when Christ died, he was buried back to the earth. But that same ground that he was taken from Adam also bore forth thorns and thistles, and they were offering their fruit before him. Let's go back and continue. Again, he said to them, Beware of false prophets come to you. All right, we read that. Every good tree makes good fruit. Every bad tree makes bad fruit. The good tree cannot make bad fruit, nor can the bad tree make good fruit. Every tree which does not make good fruit is burned in the fire. Therefore, it is, a, it is according to the fruits that is their deeds you will know them. Because not everyone who says unto me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, look at this for a moment here. In the Hebrew language here, the Hebrew Matthew. Shachal haomer ela Adonai lo yabo be melechot in the kingdom shemaim the kingdom of heaven. Aval haoser rotzon, but he who does 
Rotsan, his will. Avi, of my father, the will of my father. Shebe Shemaim, Ikanes, Bemelachot Shemaim. Now, going into verse 22, this is what I found. Let's see, I think it's in verse 22. Let me look real quick. There's a very interesting thing from the Hebraic letters that are used in one of the words here. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name cast out demons and do many signs in your name. Then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. And again he said to them, Everyone who hears these words and does them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now let me back up just for a moment here. Because not everyone who says unto me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons and do many signs in your name? Then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. And I'm, I think maybe it's verse 20. Let me, uh, there's something that I saw earlier, and I want to bring that out to you. Ah, it's Rotsan. It's actually verse 21. He who does, he who does the desire of my father. This word right here, Rotsan, he that does the desire of my father. Now, as we have been looking already about the fruit of the tree, the thorns, the thistles, the briars, in the comparison to it, even where Jesus says about in the parable, they come, the enemy came in at night, and he so tears in among, actually, uh, actually on top of the tares. In other words, it's a mingled seed is what he was talking about over in uh, Matthew, I think it's chapter 13. I just shared with you a moment ago, right? Right there. They sowed tares upon, on top of the, the, the wheat, mingled the seed and corrupted it, right? But over here, we're going through all of this, and he keeps talking about how they come in, and you'll know them by their fruit in the tree. A good tree can't bring forth bad fruit, and neither can a good tree bring forth, excuse me, a good tree can't bring forth bad fruit, and neither can a bad tree bring forth uh, good fruit, right? Then he goes here, when he gets to verse 21, First he says, therefore it is according to the fruits that is by their deeds you will know them. Then he goes on, because not everyone who says unto me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. That word, the will, is the desire of my Father. I actually heard the cat crying outside, so I got a little distracted, and it kind of threw me off for a minute because of my compassion for the cat knowing it's cold. But she's got long hair. I'm going to go set her, get her get her in in just a moment here. All right. Anyway, let's look quickly, though. Rotson. All right. There it is. Resh Sadi Vab Noon. I want you to look at just how powerful this is here. Rotson. Resh, the head. Okay, Tzadi, right here, the next one here, right there, Tzadi, first one was Resh, right there, what is, uh, it is the a head of a, a head, or a person, then we have Tzadi right here, the next one, so you have the head, all right, and then we have Tzadi, which is to pull toward something, all right. It can also be uh, the head that is pulling towards. All right. Then you have the vav pulls towards something and to join together. So the head, the father pulls together and joins together. And that also, by the way, the word, the, the letter tzadi can be righteous. The head pulls the righteous. Let's look at it that way. Resh, the head 
Then Sadi, the righteous, does what? Pulls it together with the Vav. Joins together. The head joins together the righteous. And then what we have next? Noon. Let's go to noon then. Let's, let's find the letter noon on here real quick. Uh, here we go. Joins together what? The offspring, the descendant. Isn't that fascinating? The head, Jesus Christ, comes for the righteous to join them together, his descendants, and bring them back together. I just thought that was fascinating. Even though it's a word that, that literally uh, is meaning to, um, uh, to do the desire, that is the desire of the Father, that Father's desire is also, even the way it spells out, that the head, the father, is joining the righteous together with his descendants. And, oh, I just, that just, that's actually what kind of got me started on all this. I'm not kidding you. And uh, I saw that and I'm like, wow, that is so interesting. Anyway, I hope this has blessed you as, as much as it's blessed me. Uh, I got to get ready to get for this coldness coming in. The temperatures are dropping almost to zero outside now. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of this ministry. Uh, I did do a little video over on Patreon the other day. I'm going to do another one here tomorrow. Uh, so we hope you stay tuned and listen in. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And we thank you for your uh, support and kindness for this ministry. God bless you. <laughs>